Hi, Tom Walls, Carbide Processors, talking about how to braze to laser cut steel. This is a steel saw body. It is not a saw blade yet because it was designed with little notches. Those aren't really teeth. Those are, those are shoulders. There's little notches here where you're going to braze in the tungsten carbide. There is a tradition in, um, in the industry that with brand new, brand new saw plate is harder to braise. You have more teeth loss than you do with older saw plate. Some people talk about brazing the teeth in once, knocking them out, and then rebrazing, and they work fine. Um, other people talk about tinning the notch, putting a little braze alloy there first. You don't need to do this, and the reason it got started doing this is that these plates are cut with a laser, and what you do is you use a laser that makes little tiny pinholes, a succession of them, the laser burns the steel, melts the steel, and then the metal or then the gas comes in and blows the hot steel out. So compressed air is used quite often because it's cheap. Even if you use an inert gas, you still have the hot steel exposed to the air. So you get an oxidation layer right in here on the cut line. The oxidation layer, um, it's also called an upset layer in blacksmithing, but the oxidation layer doesn't make a really strong bond. You can braze directly to it, but if you do that, it may or may not hold. Uh, the teeth may stay on until you run into a lot of stress. What you want to do is you want to grind the laser cut area you're going to braze to. You want to grind that back about five to seven thousandths of an inch. Uh, old guys used to talk about oops, grinding things back a hair. That's right, you grind it back that far. You get past the upset area. There is also an issue. Steel is iron with a small percentage of carbon. When you get steel hot, the carbon tends to migrate to the heat. How important that carbon migration is, is a subject of a lot of discussion. And I haven't seen any really definite uh, information on it, but I do know in about 10 years or so of addressing this issue that if you grind it back, uh, say five thousandths, if you grind it back five thousandths, you will get to an area where you get a really good braze. Um, there may be more carbon in there because of carbon migration, but it doesn't seem to make any difference practically. The other reason for trouble with new saw blades is that new saw blades, new saw plate, is shipped with some sort of protective coating on it. And whether it's an oil, a grease, uh, a plastic, uh, a synthetic of some sort, it's carbon based. So if you get, if you grind it back, if you have a nice clean area here, and then you get a little oil or grease or whatever in it, that's going to seriously interfere with the brazing. Uh, got called out in a consulting job maybe, I don't know, eight, ten years ago. Uh, the guy wanted to do a real good job, and he'd go through with a gumming, with a manual gummer, and gum out or grind out each notch, so it was, so it was just right. And when he was through doing it that, he'd spray a towel with WD-40 and then wipe each notch. So what he was doing was taking that beautifully clean steel and then putting a little layer of WD-40 over it. Um, once we told him to stop putting WD-40 on the cloth and just wipe it out, all the brazing problems disappeared. So you ought to be able to braze new steel plate with 100% reliability by grinding or either grinding it yourself or specifying that it be ground back about five to seven thousandths of an inch and then keeping, keeping it clean, um, go through with a cloth I like easy off oven cleaner. A lot of other people do really well with solvents. Uh, go through and at least wipe off, wipe off each place where you want to braise, which would be right here and a little bit on the sides. And that will give you a beautifully strong braise. Thank you.